Hi everyone, good afternoon. Welcome to our to our open day, the uh, Corvinus University of Budapest Open Day for International Students. Thank you for joining us. It could be afternoon. I said good afternoon. Of course, we, we have people from all over the world joining us today. So for some of you, it could be good evening or, or good morning. Uh, but we're very happy to to have you here. So uh, let me start. I have some, some slides to share with you. Uh, first of all, I'm just going to introduce uh, what, what we've got planned for today uh, and tell you about some of the speakers. First of all, me. I'm, I'm the first speaker. So you may have received an email from me before or you may have, have heard of me or got some communications. If you've done some previous webinars that we've held, my name is Matt. I'm the Director of International Student Recruitment and Admissions here at Corvinus University of Budapest. I really love my job. It's, it's great to work with lots of international students like you. It's really fantastic when we meet somebody at an uh, expo or we uh, engage with them online when they have questions. And then we see you start studying with us in September. So this is, is always a, a thrill for me. I've done this job here at Corvinus for almost two years. It's my, my second year now. I arrived in September 2020. Prior to that, I was working in London for, for university. So I'm, I'm British and I've, I've been in Budapest for, for this time, these last two years. I uh, really, really love working for universities for some of the reasons that I said. Also, I've been very fortunate to, to travel in my work and do business in something like 20 different countries and, and to meet students and uh, to visit universities and schools as, as part of my job. So uh, if you want to keep in touch with me, I would say the best way is to add me on LinkedIn. LinkedIn, if you're not using, get on it. It's a really useful tool. Uh, by the way, that's how I found the job at Corvinus or, or how Corvinus found me. Uh, they found me. Uh, through LinkedIn, and that's how I ended up in Hungary. So uh, it could be you one day. Uh, so just uh, have an account, keep your profile up to date, and you never know who might might be looking at it one day. Um, sorry, this looks like the wrong slides that I've uploaded. Um, I I edited some slides yesterday, and uh, this doesn't look good with the with the question marks. So. Uh, would you give me one second? Lily, would you just let me change the slides? I think that's the, the best way to, to manage this. Excuse me, everyone. I'm just going to mute for a minute and then get the right slides. Okay, I'm really sorry about that. I've, I've got the right slides now. Sometimes, uh, even when we prepare, things don't go perfectly, uh, but we should have the right ones now, and they're, they're just loading up. So uh, whilst we, we wait, um, I'll start to tell you about some of the, the speakers anyway that we're going to discuss on the next slide. So directly after me is Ina. She'll be presenting next. Ina is from Bulgaria. And she's in the final year of her program here at Corvinus. She's a communication and media science student. I had the pleasure of working with Ina as well while she's been, been uh, studying here. So she was working part time as a communications assistant. And we worked quite closely together over the last few years. Uh, so we, we've arranged events like this, but we've done some digital marketing campaigns. Uh, we've done some brand marketing. So uh, updating our prospectus, which Ina helped to write and, and design, and uh, some other content marketing, like updating the, the pages on our website. 
So uh, she's going to talk to you a bit about her experience here at the university on that program and uh, some general information about the university. So she'll be the first first presenter. When the slides are, are ready, I'll, uh, I'll reaffirm that. Okay, they're, they're actually ready now, so that's good. Okay, so this is much better. So now, now you can see the, the times, uh, not just question marks. Uh, so uh, Ina will speak for about 10 minutes, and then after her will be Aaron. Uh, Aaron, really cool guy. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to say that he was in your position this time last year. So he was watching this webinar, and uh, this year he's, he's presenting at it. And he studies the Applied Economics program. He's from Wisconsin in the US, but he's going to tell you a bit more about that. And another thing about Aaron is that we're actually studying Hungarian together. So we, we sit in the front row of every class, Aaron and I, and uh, we're, we're practicing and learning Hungarian together. And it's, it's good fun. I, I enjoy studying with him. He's a, he's a really smart guy. Uh, Ian is very smart as well. So we've got two, two of our top, top students to, to meet with you today. And I think you'll be interested in what they have to say. And then uh, we have essentially the two most important academic staff members at the university. So we have Dr. Rihad Santo, who's the dean of our undergraduate programs. So if you've applied for one of the six bachelor op options, Rihad is going to talk you through uh, what those are, but give a bit more detail. So some of you are at different stages in the process. Some have already made an application. Some of you might be thinking about making an application. So I think it will be very useful for everybody. Uh, for those of you who've already applied, you'll get a bit more information about those, those programs uh, that you've applied to. And then after Rihad, uh, if we go to schedule uh, around quarter to three, uh, Dr. Helba Habish uh, will present. She's the Dean of Graduate Programs. So if you've applied to an MA or MSc, uh, one of these programs, she's the lead um, of all the academic staff who are leading them. Uh, she'll speak to you about the options available and why Corvinus makes such an excellent uh, study option for you. And then finally, to close, uh, you'll have me again. I'm going to talk a little bit about the MBA program because that won't be covered by, by Rihard or, or Helga. Uh, and then we'll talk through how to apply for anybody who's not made the application, uh, give some very, very closing uh, remarks and some, some extra information about accommodation, uh, living costs, anything that Aaron doesn't cover in, in his presentation. Uh, and then to finish, we'll, we'll go to your questions. So we have until 4 p.m. We've got we've got quite a lot of time. So if we fall slightly behind the schedule, we have we have enough time, I think, uh, to answer quite a lot of your questions. So keep posting those as, as we go through the event today. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, just before I hand over to Ina, here's a little bit about the university. You may or may not know this already. So Corvinus has approximately 12,000 students. So this includes students who are here on exchange programs as well as our permanent full-time students. It includes our students studying in Hungarian language and our students studying in English language, which will be you. And we have approximately 2,000 international students. So that's around 17% of our student body. And if you're studying in English language, it could be around 50%, depending on the program that you're on. So if you're studying an English language, almost half of your course will be people not from Hungary, but from different countries. And we have students from everywhere in the world. We have uh, people from everywhere in the world here in Budapest. It's a super international city. It makes it a fantastic place to live and a fantastic place to study. You will be networking with people in the classroom from all over the world. You'll be getting opinions and sharing opinions and uh, having discussions with students from completely different backgrounds and, and diverse range of backgrounds uh, to you. This really enriches the, the discussion that you can have in the classroom, but also it broadens your networking possibilities massively. The people who you meet on campus whilst you're, you're living, studying here, maybe working if you choose to stay here in Budapest, uh, these could be lifelong contacts from all over the world. So keep this in mind. You may know uh, Corvinus is 
in the top 300 in the world. I believe Helga may mention this as well for business management, economics and social sciences. So the subjects that we offer, we're a top 300 university in the world. I don't think there's any top 300 university other than Corvinus uh, where you can study in English for the, for the cost that you can study with us and for the living costs uh, that there are in Budapest. Uh, I don't think there's any, as I said. Yeah, it's an incredible value proposition in terms of the academic quality and for the cost you pay and it being in English. Yeah, all of these three elements are extremely important. Go check the other top 300 universities. No, they, they won't be as affordable as Corvinus. So uh, really, really top, top uh, offering for the subjects that you guys want to study. We're an AMBA accredited business institution and a SEMS member here in Hungary. Uh, you can research what these mean in your own time, but it's effectively 5% of universities in the world are AMBA accredited. So it makes us one of the best for business. And there's just over 30 SEMS members in the world, and there's only one member permitted in each country. And Corvinus is the SEMS member for, for Hungary. It's, uh, it's a really great program as well. The SEMS, it leads to what's called a, a Master's in International Management. From SEMS, the network of, of other universities that are SEMS members, for specific master's programs, you can do a double degree and get this SEMS Master's in Management alongside your, your degree. I think Helga will talk more about this. The key point with the AMBA and SEMS is that if you want to work for a big four firm, yeah, if you want a top job in business, accounting, consultancy, you have to you have to have studied at one of uh, an institution that has one of these two, accreditation or SEMS membership. These are what these big four firms look for, and Corvinus has both. Yeah, so if if you want to work for a uh, Price Waterhouse Coopers or a KPMG, this kind of business, studying at an accredited or SEMS member university will massively advance your CV. So keep this, this in mind. Alongside this, uh, we have more than 120 years of history. We're one of the oldest universities in Hungary. Our campus is beautiful, it's picturesque. Ina will tell you more about it, uh, but we're actually in a UNESCO heritage uh, site of the River Danube. So it's just uh, an incredible sense of history uh, that you feel walking through the corridors at Corvinus every day and any family and friends who come to visit you will, will love it too. Finally, I have your self-funded students, which uh, we believe you all are today. Then you can benefit from a number of options, uh, Erasmus, Campus Mundi, I think Ina will talk more about these. Essentially, they allow you to go and study overseas while studying with us. And we have another great uh, opportunity uh, called Double Degrees that my colleagues will talk more about as well. So I'm going to hand over to Ina now. I'm sorry that we're running slightly behind. I apologize again that my slides were the wrong ones earlier. Uh, I'll be back at the end. And now it's over to, to Ina and my colleagues. Thank you. Enjoy it. Hello, everyone. I am Ina, and it's a great pleasure to see you all here. Um, so I will be talking a bit more about general information regarding Corvinus. So uh, your schedule, the electives you can take, how your daily life would look like, about our campus. Thank you, Matt, for your great introduction uh, and your uh, agenda summary. So now I will be sharing my slides. All right. So uh, first and foremost, uh, what I'm going to talk about today Sorry, just a little issue. Okay. As I mentioned already, program outlines, uh, the timetable, the campus, uh, and the international opportunities, which are uh, really, really cool. But first, more about me. So I'm from Bulgaria, from the capital, Sofia. And I've been studying communication media bachelor uh, here. It's my final year, so third year. And uh, I also work here at Corvinus as an international communication assistant. So I handle um, some content writing in English and so on. 
Uh, in my free time, I enjoy reading, writing, some digital art, perhaps. And the reason I chose Corvinus is because I believe it is the very best university uh, here in Hungary, um, especially when it comes to business and social sciences. It's just outstanding. As Matt highlighted already, there are plenty of reasons why to join. So I would highly advise to do so as well and join me and the other thousands of students. So uh, basically, these are the outlines, how it stands for bachelor and master's students. So when you are an undergraduate student, you have six to eight semesters um, studies. So six semesters is three years and eight semesters is four years. But for example, bachelor, um, bachelor in business and management is three and a half years because it's seven semesters, but you have one semester for internship. Um, how busy you would be throughout the week? Well, that also depends on your program. However, I would suggest it's around 12 to 20 hours. It depends on your schedule. It depends if you choose many, many electives or not really. Um, but it is very much advisable. You need to choose electives for sure. And as I already mentioned, there are internships in almost every program. So I, as a communication student, had to complete an internship as well. And my internship was here at Corvinus. So for master's, um, two to four semesters. Um, but it's predominantly it's four semesters, so two years of studies. Um, and also uh, the master's students are studying around 10 to 18 hours per week, depending on their schedule. But of course, we have some programs that are slightly more flexible in terms of working students. So if you would like to have a full-time job, job beside your studies as a master's student, that is completely possible for some programs. Uh, and also there are internships included in those as well. So the schedule is very much flexible. Um, we have this basically platform called Neptune, where you can build your schedule. And for most subjects, you would get maybe two to three options of lectures and seminars where you could place them. So for example, if a morning um, sem seminar is not working well for you, you could place it in the afternoon if there is such a possibility. Um, also, there are two types of um, studies. So the lectures and the seminars. Lectures are non-compulsory, seminars are compulsory, are in smaller groups, and that's where you do most of the practical work. So these are really, really important, crucial for your studies. You need to attend all of them. Um, about sport and languages, basically you can choose more than, I think there are more than five language options that you can choose. Of course, Hungarian, but there are uh, others like Chinese, Arabic, Russian, German. So as long as you would like to study a language, for three semesters in a row, you could um, study a language for free at the university. After then, if you would like to continue to the advanced levels, there is a tiny fee, but it's really, really small, very student friendly. So no worries about that. The sport, in the first year, you have to do compulsory sport. So there's football, um, there are some things like Zumba, so a bit more fun, energetic, um, but you could just do gym. That's as peculiar as it sounds. Um, and yeah, the electives, really important because they are very interesting for the most part. For example, this semester, I took a really, really cool one. It's called Business Startups and Enterprise, and it was amazing. So highly recommend to choose electives throughout your studies. So these are our buildings. They are right next to each other. So don't worry, you don't have to travel between the three of them. They're literally one minute in proximity to each other. Uh, the first one is the C building. It's the newest one, actually. And um, that's where I have most of my lectures. But a lot of students would tell you they have their lectures in building E, which is the oldest and I would say the most beautiful one out of the three. Um, it's incredibly beautiful, very big. I lost I, I got lost like twice in my first week of my studies. So it, it was fun, uh, definitely. Um, and in e-building, actually, that's where you'll find the administrative services of the university. Everything important, basically, would be in the e-building. So all the offices that you would need. 
uh, and the S building. That's uh, where our American corner is. Also, we have a lot of classrooms with um, like computers, um, study rooms, and um, bit smaller classrooms. Um, so a lot of, for example, business informatics students attend uh, classes in the S building. So, uh, as I already mentioned, we have both um, classrooms and lecture halls. They overall in size. We have classrooms from 15 up to 50 students. So it, you could study in bigger or small, smaller groups. For example, my class is 40 people. So we usually go for a bit bigger classroom. But when we have a um, class which has to be a bit more how to say practical, we have to be in smaller groups, we go for a smaller classroom and the lecture halls, there are a um, few lecture halls and one of them is as big, um, how to say, so big that it can fit up to 500 students. So it is quite, quite big. Um, a bit of cool perks here at the university that I really love. Um, we have this uh, great FinLab, it has 12 Bloomberg terminals. Um, financial, finance students and economic students spend a lot of time there, but I did have a few classes there as well. Um, and it's absolutely great, the feeling of sitting there and doing those really adult things, you know? Um, and we have the library. Um, actually, it's, um, it's owning around 400,000 books dissertations, manuscripts, you can find anything there. You can request a book online too. And there is an enormous space, study space, where you can sit down and just study in full silence. I usually spend my entire days prior to exams there, as sad as it sounds. So also we have some good common spaces, so to call them. That's where we usually spend our free time so we have the chill zones, like a lot of sofas, very relaxed. You can spend a lot of your time there uh, in between lectures and seminars. We have a cafeteria downstairs, which is quite comfortable since we start at eight o'clock sometimes. Uh, we have the administration in the e-building, as I mentioned, in incredibly important for you. So remember that. Um, and it's an open space style. So you just walk in there and say what you would like to do. And uh, we have the napkosy, which is basically like, a, I don't want to call it a sleeping room, but basically there are a lot of couches. You can lay there, sleep, chill, relax, write your homework, whatever you want. Uh, and it's very, very cool. I've never seen such a thing, but it was amazing when I came here and I found all of those really nice spaces where you can just go and relax in between lectures. You can actually see on the photo, um, that's our kind of uh, administration. So you can see that it's open. And the international opportunities, of course, these are of crucial importance as well. Basically, um, if you are a self-funded student, you can apply for um, Erasmus. Uh, what does that mean? You can apply for up to two semesters abroad. We have uh, more than 200 partner institutions around the world uh, on five continents. So you can go, for example, to Asia or to North America, basically uh, wherever you want to go. We probably have a partner university there. So you can enjoy up to one whole year of your studies spent there. Of course, you have to apply. You have to have a good GDP. GDP um, and overall great academic performance, um, but we're sure that you are great. So you will be managing that uh, nicely. A lot of my peers went for Erasmus, um, but they, they chose more nearby locations uh, due to COVID, uh, but all said that it was great, it was amazing, um, and they really enjoyed the experience. It was really good. So um, that was from me. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. I would love to answer your questions once we get to the Q&A section. And now I would like to give the word to Aaron, 
who would talk more about living in Budapest as an international student. Thank you. Hello. Um, as Ina said, my name is Aaron. Um, I'm a first year applied economics student here. Um, the, oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to just tell you guys a little bit about my experiences of my first year here. So covered in this slide, I'm going to just talk a little bit about like why Budapest in general, uh, the cost of living, and then what I like to do in my downtime or what my friends do in their downtime. So as I said, I'm from the United States, Wisconsin more specifically. I come from a town of 9,000 people and it's really just full of farms and cows and it's nothing like Budapest. So this was a huge change for me. But after this seven months that I've been here, I've really fallen in love with the city. I love it. Um, I, some of my hobbies, um, I really enjoy skiing. Uh, I found out this winter how easy it is just to take a trip to Austria or anywhere around and you can have some beautiful skiing. Um, if it's the summer, I just enjoy being outside hiking, which even though Budapest is a large city, you can still find plenty of places for outdoor activities. And that's some of my favorite things to do. Um, why did I choose Corvinus specifically? Um, <clears throat> I already kind of had it in my head that I wanted to move to Hungary, uh, but then I had to decide what school am I going to go to? And as Matt highlighted earlier, it's, it's one of the top business schools in Hungary. Uh, so many international students, they have excellent study abroad opportunities and student societies. Uh, for example, just a couple weeks ago, I joined a club, it's called International Investment Club, and it's made specifically for international students. And it's really just great to meet people from all over the world with these different perspectives and different walks of life. I, I feel like I learn just as much from meeting new people as I do from the classes themselves. Um, so why Budapest for you or for anyone in general? Um, the affordability is great, especially me coming from the US. I, I was just amazed at how cheap everything was here. I mean, when we go out to eat for lunch, we can get a full, we can get a whole meal for like $3 or, um, I don't know, two or three euros. Um, it's really great. The uh, accommodation is also pretty reasonable. Um, the uh, Budapest has a very good reputation as just being a beautiful city and having so many sights to see. And as I mentioned earlier, it's very easy to take day trips around Hungary or even to other countries. Um, I've really enjoyed the fast paced atmosphere. Uh, it's a huge change from what I'm used to, but now I don't know if I wanna go back to the, the slow life. Everything's just constantly moving. Every day is just a new day and you can pick a new restaurant, a new place, a new everything, and you will never get bored. Um, I guess I moved here because I really wanted a little bit of adventure. I just was kind of, life was really slow, like I said, and I thought this would be a great way to change it up. Um, the food here is absolutely phenomenal. I've had the privilege of having some traditional home-cooked Hungarian meals and you got to come here just to try it. It's, it's that good. <laughs> um, as I had mentioned before as well, uh, the diversity was really one of the main highlights for me. When I attended this last year and Matt was giving the uh, numbers on how many international students was, that really piqued my interest because yes, I've met a couple people from new countries, but I, I've only met, I think, one or two other Americans. So you're going to really be able to branch out your friend group and your network, as Matt said. You're going to meet some really amazing people and hear some really amazing stories. Um, and it's, it's just a unique experience. Um, as I said earlier, I already had decided that I wanted to come to Hungary before I chose Corvinus. Uh, that would be due to personal reasons. Uh, the lovely lady in the bottom right picture 
was doing a foreign exchange in Wisconsin. And uh, that was kind of how I got the idea to come here after. Um, and after doing my research, I mean, for me, the choice was clear. I, there was no other school that would fit my needs or my ambitions as well as Corvinus. So um, that was my journey on how I got here. Um, so how much does it cost to live in Budapest? Uh, these are some rough estimates given um, as a, collectively. Uh, for rent, if you're looking at the dorms, those are 120 to 220 euros a month. Um, that, I, I do know that uh, the dorms do fill up rather fast. Uh, so if that's something you're interested in, it's I would recommend looking into it as soon as possible. Um, you have the option for a shared apartment or a studio. Um, the shared will obviously be a little cheaper, looking at 200 to 350 euros. But if you want a studio, 300 to 450 euros is uh, pretty standard. Uh, if you're trying to go super fancy, these prices can be a lot more, but you can definitely find something very nice for these. Uh, food usually costs me about 40 to 60 euros a week. Um, that's even with the eating out every once in a while. Like I said, it's there's the food is very cheap. And if you plan your grocery shopping accordingly, you should have no problem staying under 40 to 60. Uh, the transportation. As a student, you can buy a monthly pass for 9, 9.50 uh, euros a month. Um, and that will get you on there. They have buses, they have trams, trolleys, the metro, I might be forgetting another mode of transport, but you can ride on any of the services and uh, it's really useful for getting anywhere in the city to go out to any of your adventures. Um, the cell phone plan is around 15 to 30 euros a month. Um, I think 15 would be a like very basic plan, even 30. Um, I'm not sure exactly what you would get with that, but you can plan for around 15 to 30 euros a month. And then for the medical insurance, uh, if you are a non-EU uh, citizen, you have to get medical insurance when you get here. And that's one thing that you you really don't want to waste your time with. You, you should get that done right away just in case something were to happen. Um, for the EU citizens, you should be covered already under your um, EU insurance plan. Uh, so that will cost you around 250 to 380 euros a year. Um, that's, it's really not that bad. It's not a, that bad of a price and you do get um, quite a bit of coverage with that. So all in all, a rough estimate for a budget, 475 to 600 euros a month you should plan for. Um, so downtime in the city. So when I first moved here, I really didn't have that much downtime. I was I, I took the advice from the person last year, and I'm going to pass this on to you. When you first move here, bring all your documents, have everything together, and don't waste your time getting your residence permit or your student ID. You want to take care of that as soon as possible, and then everything will be smooth sailing from there. <clears throat> Once I got all that done, it, it really only took me a couple weeks or so. Um, I really enjoyed just spending any time outdoors, walking around the city, just wandering around and finding new things on my own. It's, it's really, there's some magnificent sights here. You can see a couple of them on the side here. Um, uh, in between classes, sometimes my friends and I just walk down by the river. It's right next to campus. It's beautiful. Um, the nightlife here is amazing. Uh, it's now that school's in session, I can't go out that much. But during your breaks, there is always something going on at night. Uh, Corvinus even hosts parties at some of the uh, nightclubs here for just to get the students all together and uh, conversing. Uh, the thermal baths are some of my favorites. Uh, Hungary is very famous for them, and they have. I can't even count how many they're all over and it's really great. It's naturally heated spring water and you can just go in and bathe. It's a great thing to do by yourself with friends, with your girlfriend, whatever. Uh, also, there are many great museums here. 
Uh, and luckily, I think every museum I've been to has usually had like a Hungarian description, an English description, sometimes even multiple other languages as well. Uh, so those are definitely worth checking out. There's plenty of cafes for the coffee lovers. Uh, I'm not a coffee drinker myself, but if you are very interested in that, I believe Matt can help you out. He seems like a coffee guy. Um, the restaurants, like I said, I mean, who doesn't love food? I've, I've hardly gone to the same restaurant twice, unless there's like a very, there's a couple very cheap ones close to the university that are my, my go-tos, but I try to try a new restaurant as much as I can. And lastly, day trips. Uh, you can buy a train ticket for two or three euros and go all the way to the edge of Hungary. And there's a, um, if you go to, um, I'm blanking on the city name. A couple of weeks ago, I took a trip and we were able to just walk right to Slovakia. We just walked across the bridge and just to go see what it was like. And uh, I would highly recommend taking one of these day trips for yourself. And uh, ah, ah, uh, the city was Estergom, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Um, so that is all from me. If you guys have any questions, I'll be hanging around until the end. You can put them in the comments. Um, that's all from me. Next, you will hear from the Dean of Undergraduate Programs, Dr. Ricard Santo. Thank you, guys. Hello, everyone, and uh, good afternoon. As uh, Aaron told you, my name is uh, Richard San, so I'm the Dean for Undergraduate Studies and uh, I supervise the studies of about 7,000 people at Corvinus University and of course I, I supervise the English language bachelor programs as well and uh, uh, let me show you uh, some uh, some highlights about these bachelor programs and I tried to convince you uh, today why I believe that, uh, that it, uh, it's good to, to, to study at Corbyn's at undergraduate level. Um, first of all, I, I collected some basic principles or some basic reasons why I think Corbyn uh, is a good choice to study uh, at bachelor level. It's definitely an internationally renowned degree. Uh, Corvinus have, uh, Corvinus has some, some accreditations as, as Matt told you at the beginning. Some programs uh, specifically has, uh, has uh, accreditations as well. For example, the uh, business and management undergraduate program as a so-called EFMD accredited uh, accreditation. Uh, and, and if you say Corvinus uh, in the world, especially in Europe, but I think in many other places, this is a name that, that's, that, that says something. Um, in the last uh, couple of years, we put great emphasis on the renewal of our programs and uh, we decided to to uh, shape our programs that, that they they would provide uh, a general knowledge at undergraduate level and and, and you you get the big picture uh, uh, during the bachelor years and we believe that if you if you want to dig deeper uh, uh, and you want to study specific uh, uh, specific fields uh, then you can go to to master programs for example and uh, we believe that even for business uh, students it's important to study economics and also social sciences so these three uh, areas are of course to 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 a different extent but but they are uh, part of, of all programs that we that we provide. The second uh, second reason uh, what I, I would like to highlight is that that uh, we have many specializations in in our undergraduate programs. Um, 
almost all of them have two, three, or, or even more specializations because we believe that beyond giving a general knowledge on, on the field, we, we can give you some hints, we can give you some, uh, some idea of what some more specific fields uh, look like. And, and this is what specializations are about, to give you a flavor uh, about a smaller field uh, that you may be interested. And the beyond specializations, as Ina also told you before, uh, you have plenty of international opportunities. Uh, in many programs, we place the so-called mobility windows, so you can you can go abroad, study for a semester or a whole year, and and you can come back and and uh, your your uh, courses that you that you did uh, abroad uh, they can be accredited into your original province program. And lastly, uh, what is important in my view, that beyond the professional uh, the beyond the professional knowledge, uh, we put very serious emphasis on soft skills. Today, no one can live without soft skills in, in the business world, or or if you if you uh, so study social sciences, the same goes. Soft skills are are are, are must. And, and that's why we built in uh, soft skill development into most courses we, we offer at the university. We have six undergraduate programs uh, offered in English. You can, you can see the list. I'm going to talk a little bit about all of them. And as Ina told you, they vary uh, from six to eight semesters, so from three years to four. And business and management is somewhere in the middle. It's three and a half year uh, long. The first three are business and economics related. The last three are from social sciences. So let me, let me introduce uh, a little bit of all of them. The first one is Applied Economics. This is the course that uh, Aaron took. And uh, this, uh, this, is the, this is the program that is about economics. And uh, in the last year of this program, you can learn about some applications uh, where you can basically apply what you've learned in the first two years. And if you are interested how uh, economy works, uh, what are the underlying processes, uh, how, if you want to understand the concept of GDP, monitor-based budget deficit inflation, you can come to Corvinus to this program. And uh, of course, uh, if you want to make uh, analysis, you, you have to be, uh, in, uh, you have to you have to like uh, mathematics uh, because mathematics skills will be needed in this uh, in this program. But um, you will you will get uh, uh, very good analytical skills at the end of this program. Um, when Ina introduced uh, the international opportunities, she was talking about uh, double degree options. Uh, the Applied Economics uh, program has a, a double degree option. We have a partnership with uh, Bamberg University in Germany. And if you take this option, uh, you can study one year in Germany with, uh, with uh, students from that university. And when you come back at the end, uh, you will get two diplomas, not just the diploma of Corvinus, but the diploma of the Bamberg University. So I think it's a, it's a great opportunity. Basically, in the same free year, you can get two diplomas instead of one. So the next one is international business. It's uh, one of the most popular programs uh, in, 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 at Corvinus, and uh, 
many also many Hungarians choose this program and uh, we offer this program only in English so there is no Hungarian version because we believe if you study international business it, it doesn't make sense to study it uh, in Hungarian uh, so we offer it only in English it's our longest program because it takes four years there are eight semesters there is a compulsory internship at the end and also it's mandatory to have some international experiences so uh, the students usually go for an exchange semester to study but you, you can also uh, spend uh, a semester abroad to work or to have an internship um, we have plenty of uh, partners uh, and they happily accept uh, international business students. Um, if you want to have an international career, I, I recommend this, this uh, option. And you can see that there are four specialization in the last uh, years. And uh, this is, uh, these are global supply chain management, global economy and business, business venture and startup management and global markets and marketing. So I think it's a, it's a great variety and, and you can find the, the, the specialization that you are interested in. The next one is the business and management. I told you at the beginning that this has a program accreditation. So it has a, an extra quality stamp on it. And when you get your diploma, it will be highlighted on the diploma sheet uh, that this program is EFMD accredited. It is, uh, it is a program with seven semesters. As I told you, in the last semester, uh, in the last fall semester, you have to do an internship. The internship takes uh, 12 weeks. You can do it in Hungary or if you decide you can do it abroad. The university helps you to find internship uh, opportunities, but you can do it on your own as well. It's a very general problem, program. Uh, uh, it's about general management. And during the three and a half years, uh, we are going to show you uh, plenty of uh, functional areas of management from marketing to human relations, uh, from logistics and operation management uh, to quality management and so forth. And here we have uh, free specializations, strategic analysis, entrepreneurship, and digital marketing. These are, I think, very hot issues and very hot topics. So I, I, I truly believe that these are very attractive options as specializations. We also offer a double degree option at this program. Uh, we have a partnership with Catch Business School. It's it's a lead, it's a, it's a very good business school in France. So if you if you want to study in Bordeaux or Marseille, you can you can take this double degree option. In the uh, next part, I'm going to talk about the social science bachelor programs. There are three of them. The first one is uh, international relations. It's a three year program. So six semesters, and uh, if you want to have a career in, uh, in ministries, diplomatic missions, or you want to spend your career at international organizations, you may choose this uh, this uh, program. And uh, it's uh, it's uh, also about history, diplomacy, international relations. Uh, but as I told you, we give you some economic background uh, as well, because uh, we, we believe that uh, without economic uh, background and knowledge, you cannot understand processes in, in the world, uh, politics and, and international relations. There are two specializations in this, uh, in this program, European integration. So it's more about the European uh, processes and, and politics, but also we can study 
geopolitics as a specialization. We have uh, communication and media sciences. This is uh, what Ina took as a, as a major. And uh, this is also a free year program. And uh, it's, uh, there, are, there are very up to date and, and in super interesting topics like digital communication, virtual communication, uh, intercultural communication, just to mention a few. And here there are two uh, specializations as well, digital public life and organizational communication. It's very student-centered uh, uh, program and uh, with very interesting electives uh, and, and uh, compulsory electives. And our last program, uh, what I would like to introduce is sociology. If you are interested in social movements, social processes, and uh, issues like uh, inequality, poverty, sexism, racism, and, and you are curious about these issues, this program is for you. There are two uh, specializations, social policy and equal opportunities. This is our smallest uh, program, so it's uh, um, more interactive. There are, uh, there are small group interactive seminars small group discussions and basically everyone knows everyone and it's a very family-like atmosphere in, in in this program so i i, I do recommend uh, if if you are interested in this in this field uh, lastly i would like to talk a little bit about the requirements it's not very complicated if you if you want to study business and economics so business and management international business or applied economics you have to have or you have to do a mathematics test and you have to demonstrate that you speak uh, a good level of English. It's basically an intermediate level of English. And uh, if you want to study social sciences, then uh, there is a, a motivational interview. It will be online. And also you have to demonstrate that you speak uh, a good command of English. So that's that's what we uh, expect from you and you can expect uh, a very good education in the next three, three and a half or four years. Thank you very much for, for uh, listening to me and uh, in the next section you will be able to uh, learn about our master uh, programs and uh, our dean, uh, Helga Habisch, uh, is going to talk about these programs to you. Thank you very much, uh, Richard. Uh, I'm Helga Habisch. I'm the dean for the master's program. So I would uh, like to give you an overview about your master's opportunities here at Corvinus. Uh, so why should you study at Corvinus for your master's? Uh, first of all, I think uh, the key element of our student programs or study programs is uh, the enhanced learning experience, what we can provide. So uh, we renewed some of our programs uh, in the past years. And the main focus here was to create an up-to-date mix of different teaching methods. So we really have small groups and in interactive learning, and you can learn together with your fellow students through collaboration. And I think it's a very effective way of um, uh, building up your competencies and learning new things uh, instead of having just uh, frontal lecture type uh, classes. And... Um, what was also mentioned earlier, that uh, this is a rather big university, which means that even when you picked your major, you still have a wide range uh, for flexibility. So we have lots of specializations also in our master's programs. Uh, you can pick different modules or minors, uh, so to say. And we also have hundreds of electives, which really give you a lot of freedom to 
study what you are interested in. Uh, it was also mentioned that we are a very international university, which is also renowned by many international organizations. Uh, one of the most important ones in the masters is, of course, the SEMS, uh, which is uh, really a global network of uh, business universities and companies. So it also gives you a chance to study in the top universities uh, in the world and the get the SEMS degree from those universities, but it also gives you a chance to work for really uh, big multinational companies and do your internships uh, uh, together with the SEMS program with that companies. Okay, we also have international accreditations for many of our programs, which means that it really increases the value of the degree you would get from us. Uh, so, uh, these things mean that we really use state-of-the-art methods, materials, and uh, the knowledge you get here is really accepted worldwide. So I think it's uh, it's very important to, to know that. And uh, since we are a member of many of these alliances, uh, we are constantly in contact with key employers and scholars and researchers all over the world. Uh, so you really get a uh, state-of-the-art uh, knowledge here. Uh, let me briefly show you an overview of our master's portfolio. Uh, we have six programs in economics and business. Uh, we have one in informatics, which is business informatics. We have three programs in social sciences and two in policy. So I would like to walk you through a bit uh, of these groups of programs. I'm, uh, I don't want to go into details about each and any of them, but if you're interested in any of those, you can obviously ask any questions in the Q&A part and we are very happy to answer those. And of course, I would like to urge you to check them out on our website where you can see detailed information on the program details and also on uh, how you can apply to them. Uh, there are different types of entrance exams for several programs. Uh, so it's, it's very important that you would check them out. Okay, so the first one I would like to talk a bit about is uh, the Masters in Business Informatics. Uh, I think the special thing about this program is that it really connects the business and the IT side of the world. So many of our graduates from this program say that uh, they are really translating, so to say, the needs uh, of the business side and the IT people in the company and they make communication smoothly between different departments of a company because they can speak the language of both words. So you learn a balanced uh, mixture of uh, business knowledge and IT competences, and uh, you can easily find a really nice position in, in top companies if you go through this program. So if you're interested in this field, I would uh, really recommend you to check this out. Okay, the second group of programs in the master's portfolio and the biggest one is economics and business. Um, there are many nice options here, I would say. If you are more into mathematics and uh, modeling or data analysis, then economic analysis or finance is the one for you. Uh, we have international economy and business, uh, which is a bit of a mix of economics and business. And as the name suggests, it's also one of our most international programs. So here, uh, almost 80% of our students are international, obviously, with a number of Hungarian students as well. Uh, then we have management and leadership, uh, which is new in English, we used to have this program only in Hungarian, but from September on, we offered this one in English as well. 
this is very special because if you got accepted to this program, you are automatically participating in the SAMS program. So you will get a chance to study in one of the world's best business schools for a semester and get a SAMS degree and participation in that program automatically. So this is management and leadership. I think it's really important that uh, you would check that out. Uh, we also have a nice marketing program. Uh, there you also have specializations. You can study digital marketing or you can also uh, do uh, testing of um, consumer behavior. So you can either be a more analytical person or a more creative one. All options are in the marketing program as well because it's also a nice program with, with many options. And finally, in this group, we have regional and environmental economics, uh, which uh, is, again, a bit of a mixture of uh, geology. You can learn urban planning and also learn anything you are interested in about climate change and a green economy and sustainability. Again, in this program, there are uh, many, many options you can choose from. Uh, we have two programs in the policy portfolio. Uh, the first one is health policy planning and financing, which is obviously about healthcare and all sides of it. Uh, you can afterwards work in healthcare, in health administration, in the government, or work for a pharmaceutical company, of course. Uh, the other program is public policy and management. Uh, which is, uh, as the name suggests, more aimed for uh, government. You can also learn their leadership skills, uh, communication skills, and of course, a bit of a law, a bit of economics and uh, social planning, how to evaluate projects and um, many important applications in policy making. Okay, and uh, we also have three programs in social sciences, communication in media studies, international relations, and sociology. Uh, all these three programs uh, are very dynamically changing following the changes in the world. Of course, international relations at this moment uh, could be very interesting, I think. Uh, there you can specialize in diplomacy, for instance, or regional studies. Again, many options there. Uh, communications and media studies is something for Ina to go on to and also for many of you interested in uh, digital communication. And sociology is, again, a mix of some analytical skills, important methodologies, uh, how to create questionnaires, how to understand changes in society, and how to build a sustainable world around us. So I think uh, these are also uh, some special things that uh, might be interesting for some of you. Uh, as it was also mentioned earlier, we have a number of double degree partners. And really many of them are joined with our master's programs. So here's a list of universities in the world that uh, we have a double degree program with. A double degree means that uh, in the two years that you would spend in your master's studies, you spend usually half of your time at Corvinus and half of your time or at least one semester abroad uh, at one of the listed universities, and you would get two universities at the same time, uh, two degrees, sorry. So you not only get the degree of Corvinus, but you would also get the degree from our partner university. So you get uh, two very distinguished uh, degrees at the same time. I think it's also a nice opportunity for many of you and uh, it's important to know that uh, these programs are really aligned so 
you don't have to worry about having your subjects accepted at the home university or in the university abroad, what uh, you usually have with Erasmus or with other exchange programs. Here, it is guaranteed that all our all of your studies are accepted at both universities, so you get two degrees at the same time. Okay, so this was a quick overview of our master's programs. It's really a long list to choose from, so if you have questions, feel, feel free to go ahead and ask us. Uh, so thank you very much for your attention, and I would like to give the floor back to Matt, uh, I guess to cover the Q&A section of this uh, open day. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Helga. That was, was great. And uh, thank you to everybody who presented. I thought our students were superb. I, I knew they would be. I told you, Ina and, and Aaron are both great. Uh, and thank you also to, to Rihard. It was a very informative presentation. Uh, I'd like to just mention uh, two people really quickly. Uh, one is my colleague, Lily who works behind the scenes and uh, she is really the superstar of all of these events that we, we host. Uh, whilst, whilst we're uh, doing these events, she's monitoring, uh, constantly answering the questions. She's the one that controls what comes up on the screen. It's not an easy job. There's a lot to manage. We do a lot of testing before the events. So uh, thank you, Lily. It's always a pleasure to, to work with you. Lily is another Corvina student who works in the communications department as, as well. So uh, you might see her, uh, her name and you might meet her when she studies, uh, if, when you study here with us. And uh, the other person, I just wanted to say hi to my friend Seb, who's a student on the preparation program here with us. I saw that you're here joining the event, Seb. It's, uh, it's really great to have you with us. I think the last year has gone great for you here at Corvinus whilst you've been studying the, the preparation program. Uh, I know you're studying hard. Uh, it's been good to, uh, to see you when, when you've been here in Budapest and occasionally watch the odd game of football as well. And uh, we're really looking forward to uh, continuing having you as a student here next year. Uh, I believe that you're, you're going to do the MSc finance program, which is, is great. Okay, uh, last section uh, from me. And then we'll go back uh, to, uh, to answer your questions. So this is called how to apply, but there's, there's some other things in this other than how to apply. So hopefully this will answer uh, most of the questions remaining that you have, uh, and de definitely you'll find out how to apply if you need to know that. I told you that I would talk about the MBA. Uh, so some of you might be interested in the MBA. You might be thinking, why did Helga uh, not mention the MBA. Well, Helga is the Dean of Master's Programs. The MBA is a master level program, but it's slightly different. It's what we call an executive program. So academically, it's at the same level. You can do an MBA after you finish, uh, finish uh, a business, uh, sorry, a bachelor degree, but you also have to have some work experience. That's what sets an MBA apart from a normal master's program. So if you don't have the work experience that we talk about uh, or we talked about, uh, so we will talk about on this slide, uh, then think about some of the programs Helga mentioned. If you're interested in a business master, you could do finance, marketing, management and leadership, international economy and business, even the business informatics. Yeah, there's, there's uh, business elements to that. So if you don't meet the work experience requirements, don't apply for an MBA because you won't be able to, to start the program. I know in some countries, the term is used differently. So uh, sometimes a bachelor in business administration is referred to as a BBA and students think that an MBA is what directly follows that. It is, but you have to have the work experience to do a proper uh, MBA from an accredited university. So guys, we have two options. If you're interested in this, uh, we have a two-year version called a full-time MBA. And this is called full-time because it's like working or studying full-time. You're going to do about 20 hours per week in the classroom, spread over three or four days. And uh, to do this program, you need to have graduated and have three years of work experience after you graduated from a bachelor's. 
So if you're applying for September 2022, that means the earliest that you could have graduated uh, is 2019. Yeah, the latest, sorry, that you could have graduated is September 2019. So any year before 2019 would be fine, but any year after uh, would not be possible. If you have a master's in another subject, uh, then it's just two years uh, since you graduate. And you can see it's a very, very affordable program. Uh, where I'm from in London to do an MBA, it can cost £70,000 <laughs> to do an MBA. So for a chance to do an MBA at an accredited business school, have a SEMS uh, degree, a double degree option as well, um, and to do it for less than €16,000 over a two-year programme is quite exceptional, and in English as well. Uh, so it's a really, really top top program to consider. Uh, for others, you might be a bit more senior. You might be at a slightly later stage of your career. Uh, and th then you can consider what we call an executive MBA. And we have a really nice program here as well. Uh, currently, it's it has been a joint degree with Maastricht School of Management and Seed Business School. Uh, so Seed is a, a sister entity of Corvinus. So you get the award from, from all three. This executive program is different to the full-time MBA. For this one, uh, the teaching is delivered over one intensive weekend each month. So what that means is you could be working full-time while studying the program. For the full-time MBA, you, you need to take a career break, really, or cut your work to part-time. Uh, but for the, for the executive MBA, you can continue your job. And if you don't live in Hungary, it's possible to travel to, to Hungary uh, to study this program. Uh, there's low cost flights now to Budapest from a number of countries, even in Asia uh, and outside of Europe. Wizz Air, uh, the, the Hungarian airline provider, does flights, uh, I heard, from Azerbaijan uh, even now. So it's uh, more connected. Budapest is more connected than ever. And uh, if this suits you, there's uh, good options available. Of course, the other thing you could do is, is live in Hungary. You could find a job here and then you could just attend those intensive weekends. So di different options for different people, two distinct programs there. Now we talk about the entry requirements uh, and we had a question about the preparation program. So I'll kind of cover this uh, in the next few slides. First of all, you need to have English proficiency. On our website, we tell you what the exemptions are from this. Generally, everybody who's not a native English speaker and uh, look at how we define this. We define it in a legal uh, context, the same way that British universities define it. We, we use that because UK, the home of English language, uh, will use the same system for defining what a native speaker is as, as them. So. You must meet these requirements or you have to have studied at high school in English and you have to, for the duration, at least four years, um, at the last four years of high school and you have to have a letter from your school or you have to have done your degree in English and have a letter from your university saying that the language of instruction was English. Everybody else must have an English proficiency test. There's no excuse not to. The Duolingo test that you can see on the screen costs 50 US dollars. It's cheaper than the application fee to apply for Corvinus. Everybody can do, do the Duolingo test. It's an online test um, and the results are available very quickly within two to three working days. So if you're not sure if you're going to meet these requirements, do the Duolingo English test. Prove to us that you have over a B2 level of English. This is the minimum requirement. It's the minimum requirement. You're going to be in the classes with people like Ina and Aaron. Yeah, Aaron's a native speaker. Ina's C2, highly proficient, doing business in English. And she was as good uh, years ago. I've seen her do a presentation when she was 16 at the UN. Uh, so these are the kind of people that you're going to be in the class with. You need to have that level of English as a, as a minimum as well. Uh, for everybody else, if you want to do one of the bachelor programs, which uh, Rihard introduced you to, then you should finish high school. And we recommend that you have 12 years of school. Yeah, if you're from a country that has fewer than 12 years of school, 
we generally recommend that you start on our preparation program instead. Um, for the master's programs, you need to have an undergraduate degree. You need to have passed your undergraduate degree and uh, you need to meet the minimum credit requirements as well. Have a look on our website to see what those minimum credit requirements are. There's uh, subjects uh, that you need to have some credits in. It means that your bachelor's degree has to be slightly related to the master's degree. It's not a huge requirement. Normally you need about 30 uh, to 70 ECTS. So this is about half a year of study. So uh, if half a year out of three of your bachelor is related to the master's program, generally you're gonna meet the requirements. We can help you if you're not sure, uh, but we do give a lot of guidance on our website about these minimum credit requirements. So uh, please check, please read uh, before you apply. If you're still not sure, we'll try to help you. Uh, we do get a lot of inquiries and we really encourage you to, to be as proactive as, as you can. University preparation program. If you don't have 12 years of school, if you're under 18, and if your English is below the B2 level, and uh, by the way, not lower uh, than, than B1. Yeah, is if your English is below that, you're not going to be able to improve by a whole IELTS band score in one year. Yeah, you, you need to be a minimum of B1 to, to do the preparation program. And uh, Budapest is a great city to live in if you speak English well. You can really get by in English. I, I'll talk, talk about this a bit later. Uh, but you need to have good, you do need to have good English skills for day-to-day -day life here. You don't need Hungarian. It's a bonus if you if you speak good Hungarian. It's fun to learn to learn Hungarian. I, I enjoy the challenge a lot and I like trying to speak a little bit now that I, I can say a few words. Uh, but English is really enough for day-to-day -day life if you've got B2 level and above. So this program is is a great option for people that are not ready yet to do a bachelor's degree. Yeah, by not ready, I mean you can't go straight on to a bachelor's degree and start achieving a good GPA. By good, I mean three or four out of five. Yeah, top, top grades. Yeah. Um, if, you, if you don't meet these requirements, preparation program uh, is a good place to start. It's going to give you some soft skills. Yeah, Rihard mentioned soft skills in his, in his presentation. What are soft skills? We mean things like analysis, problem solving, presentation, communication, verbal and nonverbal communi communication. These are all soft skills. Hard skills as, or uh, technical skills relate to the specific subject that you're studying. Yeah, so if you're an economist, macroeconomics, knowing how to do macroeconomics and how to derive equations, these can be hard skills. These can, can be technical skills. But your soft skills are the the you kind of things that employers look for. Yeah, the, the, these kind of presentation, communication, analysis, those kind of skills that I mentioned. So this program will build those up. Uh, they'll help. It will help you a lot as well, just to get used to life in another country, as well, living away from your family, uh, being in a different culture, getting used to life in in Budapest. Uh, it can help you with academic. Uh, preparation as well so how many of you guys who are bachelor level have done an essay before yeah this this preparation program will help you with skills like like researching and essay writing and how to reference properly so it's a really really useful program uh, for students uh, who as i said not ready yet for a bachelor program okay uh, if you've applied then uh, you've got these entrance exams to pass. So if you apply for the uh, bachelor programs in business or economics, you have to sit a mathematics test and score at least 56% in that test. If you've applied for one of the social science at bachelor level, then you do an interview. Uh, there's good information for all of these uh, entrance exams on our website. So if you go to the website today, you can find that with this link that we provided here, uh, Lily, could we share that to, to Facebook as well, that, that link, if you don't mind? Um, if, you go, if you go to that link, then you will see uh, what the entrance exams are 
for all of these programs. We give you a practice mathematics paper. Uh, so you can you, you can learn uh, how to do the, the you can practice doing the test in time conditions. You can see which questions are going to come up. We give you the textbook. Uh, we tell you which chapters of the textbook you need to revise. Uh, you just need to go by the textbook uh, and prepare. If you want to, if you need to do an interview, you need to show that you have skills, knowledge, and motivation. We expect you to have read about the program you've applied for. We expect you to know uh, what, what it's about. Rehard's told you uh, today some good things about all of these programs. So uh, these are the kind of, this is the kind of information that you could share at the interview. Uh, and think about your future aspirations, yeah, why you're choosing to, to study this. Okay, Lily said she'll post the link soon. Thanks a lot, Lily, for, for that. Uh, there's a second link as well, actually. So this is now for the master's uh, programs. It's the equivalent link. Uh, so if you're a master's applicant, one of the programs that Helga uh, mentioned, but actually also the, the MBA will be very similar. Uh, then first of all, you do a competency test. It's kind of like a verbal and nonverbal reasoning test. Uh, let's, let's say like an intelligence IQ type, type test. Uh, after that, for eight of the programs, there's a written exam, just an essay, really. And then finally, there's an interview. So uh, you'll do an interview uh, straight away if you're an MBA applicant. There's no uh, written exam or competency test. And uh, for anybody that doesn't have to do a written exam, you also go straight for the interview, uh, but after the competency test, if that, if that makes sense. Check the website so you're clear uh, based on what you've applied to, what your pathway is going to be. And the interview is very similar as the one for bachelor level, but we expect you to score higher. Uh, we expect you to score 65 minimum uh, for that one. And that's, that's the higher pass mark. So 56 for bachelor, 65 for masters. If you're ready to apply, you can do this today. Uh, you're able to apply until the 15th of May. The link is here on the page. It's international-application.uni-corvinus.com. Dot hu. And it's on the screen. Thank you, Lily. That's, that's even better. There's an application fee of 75 euros. Some of you have done this already. Uh, so please bear with us if you've already applied. For those of you who haven't applied yet, key information. Uh, you have to pay this 75 euro fee. Once you've applied and you've uploaded the statutory documentation, for everybody, this will be ID or passport. In most cases, that's passport for European nationals, EU nationals, they can upload their national ID card. Uh, and transcripts. Yeah, if you're still studying, you should upload your academic transcript of record, official document from your school showing how your studies are going so far. So if you're in year 12, give us your transcript of record up to year 11. Or if you have it until December 2021, Give us your transcripts of record for until until then. So you should upload this at the application stage, uh, at the very start of the application stage. If you're still if you finish studying, upload your final transcript, uh, translated into English if it's not in English, and diploma. Upload everything straight away. Save yourself time, um, and then we can we can start to process the application. For everybody else, it's an in progress transcript. Uh, so we've got the passport or ID, the transcript, academic qualification. And uh, the last thing is the proof of English proficiency. So in nearly all cases, that's one of the certificates that I mentioned or a letter from, uh, yeah, from your school or university. In a few instances, for native speakers, as we discussed, uh, they, they can say that they're a native speaker. Obviously, we'll, we'll check this, yeah, and we will apply uh, our admissions policy. Uh, so if our staff tell you you need to provide something via email, please listen to them. It's not normally negotiable. Uh, they're, they're telling you or suggesting that you provide something to help you in your application so you'll be successful. If you do all of this, uh, then you will be invited for entrance exams. Some people who've applied early will do entrance exams in the next month, in April. For everybody else, uh, you'll do your entrance exams in June. 
at the start of June. So early June, I will invite you to do these entrance exams. By the uh, later stages of June, around the 20th, uh, then you could in, in actually have an a conditional offer, sorry, conditional offer. So the next uh, stage is that, is that conditional offer. And at that point, you should pay your semester one tuition fees. That would effectively reserve your place in the program. The only thing uh, that you need to do is apply for a visa and uh, you have to have your final diploma legalized. OK, this is the this last step. So we wait to July. Uh, normally for most students, they graduate by that time. Um, and once we have this, uh, once we have these documents from you, then uh, we're going to make an unconditional offer to you. OK, so that's that's how it works. Right. A uh, bit disjoint going from that slide uh, to this one. But we, that's with the how to apply section done. Just a few final notes about Core Venus, and then we'll go to the Q&A session. Uh, so we still got a bit of time. I, I hope you guys are all, all OK to stay with us and, until 4 p.m. OK, a degree. You've heard lots of good reasons to study at Core Venus already today. One of the reasons that you choose to study is to invest in your future. This is one of the most important reasons. You're doing a de degree because it's going to give you skills, uh, network, and an opportunity to secure a job. Yeah, so the money you pay in a tuition fee or the emotion and time that you invest to studying or traveling to another country to study is for that, that end result. Uh, it's not just the sheet of paper. It's everything that you get that goes along with that and the, the transformation that you'll see in yourself as a person. You will have exceptional employability prospects if you study at Core Venus. OK, you can you can have pretty much better prospects here than you can at any university in this region. And this this is the reason why. Well, these are the reasons why. So Jota Nadi, who is the chairman of Core Venus, the, the, the foundation that runs the university. By the way, it's a private university. Nearly all the universities in Hungary became privatized within the last two years. Uh, so that's that's very normal uh, model here in this country. Uh, he's the CEO of one of the largest petroleum companies in this part of Europe called Mol. Huge, huge company. If you're here in Hungary, you won't miss it. It is a multinational uh, as well. My boss, Anthony Radev, I spent some time with him on Monday. We, we had some, some visitors from, from the US, actually. AACSB that we mentioned earlier. We are hosting a, a visitor from AACSB. It was really good fun. Uh, I met with Anthony then. So we see him, I see him quite regularly. Uh, you guys have direct contact to me. Anthony Radev is one of the most important influential people in Hungary. He has direct access to the president of this, this country. So if you're studying with Corvinus, if you know me, I'm one step removed from Anthony. Anthony is one step removed from the top, top people in this country. He is a key decision maker. And that's how close you'll get being at Corvinus. OK, Anthony is a director on the boards of Wizzair, again, of Mo. Uh, for those of you who like football and for those of you who don't, still applies. Uh, the Hungarian Football Federation and DSK Bank, which is the Bulgarian subsidiary of OTP. OTP is a, another huge Hungarian uh, company. Uh, you're going to see it if you if you live here. You're possibly going to bank with them if, if you live here. I, I do myself. Uh, and this the most important thing on the slide is actually the next statement. So can you see this line here that says Corvinus graduates and 60% higher seven years after graduating? I've given the source. Uh, so for those of you uh, that want to see this, we normally share the slides uh, so you can go and do some research. It's on our website. There's an article about this. What this means, if you study a business management program at Corvinus and you have a friend that goes to study the same program at a competitor university in Hungary, seven years after you finish, seven years after your friend finishes, you'll earn 60% higher than them statistically. 
Yeah, huge, huge, huge difference. Why is this? And it's to do with the, the quality of the program that you study. It's to do with the soft skill development. It's to do with the network and the reputation that this university has. Corvinus has very, very significant alumni in this part of Europe. If you're studying here, you're going to be networking. You're po possibly going to become one of these very, very key people uh, in this part of Europe. Or if you go back to your home country when you finish, you could be a decision maker who's then got the contacts uh, with people in this part of Europe. So I think that's something huge uh, for you to, to consider. And generally, uh, you've also got a chance to work for some top, top multinationals here in Budapest. And these are companies that look to recruit English speaking graduates. You can see that nearly every sector is represented. Every sector, in fact, is represented. So you've got tech firms, food and beverage, consultancy, finance. We've got General Electric there as well. Uh, telecoms, if I didn't say it. Uh, so really, I, I hope many of you recognize most, if not all of these companies on the screen. Great uh, employment opportunities for you here, just in Budapest. This isn't Hungary. This is 150 of these multinational companies just in Budapest. That's a huge amount uh, for a city of just 2 million people population. Aaron talked a lot about accommodation. Uh, he said that there, there's something about spaces, so I thought I'd just add the, these extra details. If you want to stay in one of the university's three dormitories, we have approximately a thousand spaces. If you can't secure a place, then there's 500 extra spaces in our third party supplies. Really, really nice accommodation options there. Sometimes a bit more expensive. So it could be up to 450 euros in some cases per month for these top end private accommodation options. If you go for it, you know, really nice. You can stay, you can stay alone. You can have a single room if you want that. Uh, also, people from other universities use these accommodation uh, or these dormitories as well. So you can meet people from other universities too. Um, so it's, it's also a nice opportunity. Aside from that, yeah, you can get your get your own place. You can get a, a place. Uh, Aaron mentioned this, but I would say two fifty to three fifty euros per month if you if you're renting. Uh, your own place and a lot of master students like this option mature students prefer this option some of the the bachelor students even go for this too okay so we're finally going to get to uh get to questions very very uh final thoughts uh to close so why hungary why budapest why corvinus um, of course everybody who's presented today is waiting to to meet you here anyway if that's not reason enough uh, let's just recap. So you can get a quality education in English at a very, very affordable price. Uh, you can live in English. You can live your life in English as well. Yeah, so think about this. There's not many countries where you can do that at this, this kind of price. There won't be any other top 300 universities in the world for these subjects that we mentioned, business, economics, and social sciences, with such a strong offering. We've got the double degrees mentioned by Eno, mentioned by Helga. Uh, yeah, lots of options for you to go and study, even at Western universities, uh, whilst being here in, in Budapest. Take advantage of it. Get a second degree from one of our partner universities whilst uh, studying with us. Fantastic opportunity. Do a semester overseas using the Campus Mundi, using Erasmus Plus. Uh, there's 250 plus partners that we have available. For those of you who are non-EU, Budapest, Hungary is a great chance for you to build your life in the EU. If you study here as a self-funded student, it's very, very easy to secure a uh, residency and to secure a job uh, as long as you're proactive in applying before you graduate. And there's all those multinationals that I mentioned for you to uh, apply for jobs at. It's also very, very affordable. Aaron told you his, his opinion on this. There's not many cities uh, where you can live on 6,000 euros per year. So the package price, if we look at tuition fee plus living cost for Corvinus, we're talking a maximum of 12, 12, 13K per year 
for most of these programs. You can't, you can't do that in Western Europe at all. Yeah, in, I'm from London. The minimum you need for a visa is about 12,000 for nine months in your bank account. That's, that's what they say is the minimum uh, just to get a visa. So it's much, much more affordable here and there's, there's not that strict visa requirement. This is a recommended amount that you have in your bank account. Uh, Ina and I, we've looked at the cost before. Aaron's looked at the cost today. We think that for about 6,000 euros per year, you can, live, you can live comfortably in this city. So it's a good figure to keep in mind. All the points that Aaron raised, it's just a beautiful place. Uh, you know, I've, I've been here for a year and a half and every day walking to work, I'm taken aback by the beauty of, of Budapest. It's simply stunning. And uh, it has the benefit of being a big city, but a small city at the same time. So 2 million people, a, a good enough size, lots of uh, opportunity here, but small enough for you to be able to get everywhere, nearly on foot. And uh, there's also a great transport system. So whatever you want is here. Yeah, Aaron mentioned that I like coffee. I do like coffee. There's really good coffee shops in, in Budapest, uh, great restaurants, really good nightlife museums was mentioned yeah everything you could want a city to have is here and very very international as well yeah how, how international is budapest we have more than twenty thousand international students studying in budapest we have more than 20 million tourists visiting budapest each year and we have all those multinationals uh with hundreds of thousands of non-hungarians working there as well so it's massively international as a city, which is a great thing. Uh, it makes it a really pleasant place to live. Um, and it's just great to meet people from all over the world. I, I love it. And uh, yeah, you, could, you can go skiing if you like. Uh, this was also mentioned before, never, never been myself. Uh, but Budapest is really near to lots of capital cities in this part of Europe. So if you're from us or you're from asia or latin america or the middle east and this is your first time in europe use budapest as a hub to go visit all these neighboring countries and uh, you see how different they are how similar they are in some ways as well uh, but you'll really get a chance to enjoy the culture okay uh, so that's it from me sort of uh, because we're now going to start answering your questions We'll finish at four o'clock. So we tried to get as many questions in as possible. And I think my colleagues, I think Ina and Aaron for sure are going to, to rejoin me now as well. Hi guys, welcome back. Hello. Hi. Okay, I'll read the question, shall I guys? And one of you can, can answer this one. Uh, so is there a single bedroom in Corvinus dorms? Who wants to take that? Uh, I can go for that. Um, I don't over. stay in the yeah. dorms, but uh, I have a lot of friends who stay in them, and I believe they just they fill up too fast for you to get a single room. Uh, if you are looking for the single, I would recommend uh, what Matt said about looking for one of those like private accommodations. It might be more expensive, but you can definitely get your own room. Yeah, okay. I I actually don't don't believe there there is a single room, especially in the dormitory right next to uni i think they only have two three and four people rooms so unfortunately that's for the one next to us so we can go to the next one thanks thanks you know okay so miklos is asking are the lectures and seminars held fully in person or are there some hybrid online held courses too if so what are the school's policies or rules when it comes to to covid I'll give a quick answer and then the, the students can, can chip in. I know that Helga also answered this one I, I saw on Facebook. Uh, at the moment, Miklos, your, your name looks potentially Hungarian. I don't know if you, you live here in Budapest. Uh, Hungary is pretty open at the moment. Yeah, so there's you, you can do anything right now in, in Budapest. It's safe. Uh, so there's, there's not concerns about, about COVID at the moment. You can enjoy your life. Uh, you don't have to wear a mask. There's no vaccine requirements at the moment. Even there's no PCR requirements. Uh, so it's very, very open. And the university is uh, is pretty much 
open at the moment as well and being well attended. Guys, what do you think as, as students here? What have you noticed? Um, so from my side, what I can tell for sure, yeah, basically um, because my program is only 40 people, um, so that's below, I think the threshold is 60 people. So below 60 people, you can have the seminars and lectures in person. So we all go to the lectures and seminars in person, every single one that is below 60 people and all of mine are under 60 people. However, I'm pretty sure that some um, programs have much more than 60 people, which would suggest that they would have to um, have some lectures perhaps online or in a hybrid mode. Uh, or, for example, the classes have to be separated. So there, there are like less than 60 people in a class. Um, but f as of now, there are no um, masks or any requirements uh, in order to come to you. So you don't have to necessarily uh, show a vaccination certificate, for example, to enter the university, um, which I, I think uh, can be... Uh, we wanted it for the library for a while, but now it's uh, all clear. So, yeah, currently we are offline and we very much hope to stay offline because it's best to study that way. But uh, we'll see how it goes with COVID. Yeah, just really quickly, um, for example, my my program, Applied Economics, I believe there's 30 or 40 of us. But, uh, for example, my accounting class and my microeconomics class are being taken by two different programs. So for those two classes, we have our lectures um, online and the seminars in person. So it'll be a smaller seminar. I don't believe there's any classes that do online seminars, if I'm correct. I haven't had one at least yet, but. Uh, yeah, like the seminars tend to be smaller in general. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. So, but the lectures are the ones that are usually bigger. Right. Thanks, guys. And Helga said that the university is prepared uh, to, to change. Uh, yeah, th this is the answer. Yeah, so larger lectures uh, hold on, held online. So the guys talked about them the being in smaller classes or via video, uh, which you can watch whenever you wish. If COVID uh, strikes hungry again, let's hope it won't. Um, it, it seems like new variants of, of it are less, less severe anyway. Uh, then the university is prepared for this. So you, you guys can feel safe and assured here and you can enjoy your life as well, which is, is great because it's been a difficult two years for, for everybody. Okay, let's do the next one, Lily. Uh, Walid, are there different dormitories for master's students? No, uh, not specifically, Walid. Uh, we've, we've talked through the options. There's the three university dormitories and there is the four private dormitories. You might find more master's students in some of the private dormitories purely because they can be more expensive. And uh, as a master's student, if you've done some work as well, uh, you might be able to afford the, the higher fees. Uh, so I hope that answers that one. Let's check out the next. Uh, Ahmad, uh, can you get accepted with a five-point IELTS score? No. Uh, we said that B2 was the minimum requirement. IELTS 5.5 is only B1. Uh, we would recommend the preparation program if that's your, your IELTS score. Um, and then you'd be above B2, hopefully within a year of studying that, that program. Keep studying uh, and consider the prep program. Uh, Anton. Um, okay, guys, I, I saw this one earlier. It's a bit of a difficult question to answer. It's not difficult, but I, I, I've got an answer. And then, uh, Ina, Erin, if you have anything you want to add, feel free to chip in. So Anton was asking... Uh, how does the ongoing situation affect Russian, Ukrainian, Belarusian students? Yeah, so we I think we know what Anton's referring to. He's talking about the conflict in Ukraine. Hungary is a neighboring country to Ukraine. So first thing to say is that Budapest is a long, long, long way away uh, from where the conflict is. Yeah, so we're talking about thousands of kilometers or at least at least a thousand kilometers, I think. My, my geography is not so good. Uh, but it's a you're a long way away from any any issues. Um, I know that students, uh, families who are in different countries sometimes worry about how close they can be, but actually here is is pretty it's pretty safe. So this is a message for everybody. Uh, you you in Budapest you'll be very safe. Hungary is a NATO member, 
Okay, so I don't I don't think there's any possibility of the war spreading to to Hungary because uh, there's this NATO article which can be invoked, uh, which means that every NATO country would have to fight uh, if if Hungary was was invaded. So it's it's very very safe. There's pretty much no chance of that happening. Uh, you know, we're really looking at the end of the world if uh, if anything worse than that happens. So uh, specifically for students from these countries, yes, we're receiving a lot of inquiries from Russians and Ukrainian students. Um, we, we, have, we have more than 50 students from both of those countries currently studying with Corvinus. The students that are here, uh, they're, they're safe. Uh, they're happy here in Budapest. They're staying on their programs. They're living their life here. Uh, they're able to carry on living here with all privileges that everybody here uh, has if you're if you're Russian or Ukrainian uh, then you can still study with us in in September we don't know uh, how some of the sanctions will affect Russian students for example the block on on Swift so there could be some challenges paying tuition fees but we're committed to supporting you uh, in that Ukrainian students are, are completely welcome to, to study here as well um, and I believe that if you check the Study in Hungary website, I, I believe that there could be some opportunities available, some extra uh, scholarships available to Ukrainian students that are, that are coming soon. So if you're Ukrainian or studying in Ukraine, keep an eye on the Study in Hungary website. In April, there could be some additional scholarships available to students from, from your countries. Uh, yeah, Aaron, go for it. Uh, yeah, so I just wanted to point out also, um, when this conflict started at the university, we set up um, like a donation boxes to help out with these students. Uh, I, I don't know what the total raised was, but I know everyone's been very supportive. And I'd also like to point out that I have, I don't think I have any Ukrainian classmates, but I have Russian classmates as well. And I have met a few people from Ukraine and there's no like animosity between the students or anything. It's not affecting the personal lives as far as them being here. I'm sure that they're going through some struggles with their family and at home, but they, they're they still just talking like people. It doesn't cause any issues between the students. I think that was important to point out. Yeah, um, I, I also wanted to add about the boxes that we set up like a donation spot where we could uh, donate different non-perishable uh, food items and so on. Um, and also actually, the, um, so Corvinus has an integrated kind of men mental health counseling uh, for students. It's available for free to any student at the university. And especially right now, uh, it a lot of... Um, both Ukrainian and Russian students um, turn to to these services. So, um, if you feel, for example, um, so stressed and so on, anxious, uh, you can turn anytime to the um, services here at the university because um, they they take care of uh, the mental health uh, needs of the students. So, I think this is a pretty nice thing to do as well. Yeah, good answers, guys. Thanks. Thanks for adding those. So I know we moved to the next question, but definitely we're welcoming everybody. If you're in Ukraine, have a look on the Study in Hungary website because there could be some further benefits, some study options available to you. Uh, Hungary is really great as well. Sorry, really, really quickly, because uh, some Western countries are being really strict on Russian citizens. So I heard that Spain students in Spain who are Russian had to leave if they're on exchange programs. Um, and there's similar difficulties to enter certain countries. But for Hungary, I believe it's going to be a safe option. And, and I personally will welcome students from Russia and from Ukraine and from everywhere uh, to study with us. OK, Shaban Alkindi, uh, international student. Great. You made it to the right open day. And I applied for the uh, property program, maybe the prep program. Uh, I think you mean preparation program related to my track in business and management. 
yes, uh, we talked about this program earlier, so I hope you got the, the information from that. It's a general program. It's going to help with your study skills. It's going to help with soft skills, as I mentioned, and with, with English language, written and spoken. I think it will be a good starting starting point for you before doing a bachelor's program. And uh, it's a two semester program if you join us this September. Semester two, you'll start to do, actually in semester one as well, you do a program called Introduction to Business English. Uh, so you're, you're improving your English, but within a business context as well. So yes, this gives you some, some key business management theory that will be useful for you. Okay, let's go to the next. Where do you apply for a dormitories from Simon Walton? Uh, so that you can see via our website, actually, if you go to the English language website, uh, check out the section that says for students, I think it's called. Uh, and then there's a section for dormitories. Ha have a look there. Guys, anything to add? Maybe not. Okay, let's see. Okay, uh, well, uh, Ina, you talked a bit about sports. Maybe you can answer this one. So uh, Benjamin is talking about uh, for an individual program, can you combine with a sports career? Uh, I guess the question is about uh, can you maintain, maybe Benjamin is a professional sports person, can he maintain playing sport alongside studying? This would be my interpretation of the um... question. Yeah, it would be my interpretation as well. Um, I know, t actually, in my class, we have a girl who is a professional uh, horse rider, which is a sport, and uh, she manages to maintain study and sports career at the same time. Uh, she just has to get like a paper that, okay, she now has a, um, a cup or something, or she has to go abroad for a tournament um for her horse riding and uh basically the missed classes uh are kind of accepted or um yeah so so she's managing if that is the question um so i think you you would be able to to um negate between sports career and uh study program Okay, thanks, thanks, Sina. That was good. Hannah Schneiders is asking, how would a double de degree work, for example, for a master's program in communication and media studies, or are double degrees only possible for specific study programs? Yes, they're only possible for specific study programs. Helga went through which which programs uh, have have double degrees. There's a number of programs with the SEMS uh, option as well. Check check the website. On each program page on the website, uh, we list which double degrees are available. By the way, Ina and I spent quite a few months uh, updating that, that information. So, so have a look at it. Uh, it's, it's there to, to help you. I think for communication and media studies, there might not be a double degree, if I recall correctly. Uh, but maybe, you know, you could consider MSc in marketing as a related program to communication and media studies, because for the marketing uh, there are options, including the, the SEMS program. So it's a, it's a related field to communications. If the double degree is a really important factor to you, uh, have a look at the MSc in marketing. It's a really nice program. Okay, next. Uh, Risha Khan. Okay, my query is regarding eligibility as I completed my ACCA in 2016 uh, after completing membership criteria. You gained ACCA membership status in January 2022. Are you eligible for an MBA or MSc finance? Um, and explain entry test steps and how an applicant should pre prepare for those exams. Risha, I don't know which point you asked your questions, uh, but in the last part of the presentation, I went through uh, the entry exam steps. If you go to a website, uh, check out the links that we, uh, we shared there's information on what the entrance exams will be. Yeah, so for finance, you'll see uh, what the interview content is going to be about, what the written exam is going to be about. For the ACCA, it really depends um, on what uh, level it is. Yeah, because ACCA can be different levels. So if it's considered equivalent to a bachelor degree, uh, you could be fine. Yeah, but you need to have accrued three years work experience. 
So I think the best best way to deal with your situation is for you to contact, if you make an inquiry via uh, our page on our website for international application, if you look for the international application page, make an inquiry there uh, and my colleagues or I will, will arrange a, a conversation with you because it's too hard to tell from the information on the screen. So I need to see that you have a bachelor degree. Uh, I need to see which year your bachelor degree was obtained um, and that you have three years work experience after that. So this is all important. Uh, in theory, the ACCA could be equivalent to a bachelor degree, but we, we have to see. Okay, uh, next one, Maid Shabbat. Um, yes, Ina, what did you want to say? Yeah, I, I can answer this. So does the MA of Communication Media include an internship? Uh, this is the postgraduate program of mine. So it's it's not mine specifically. But uh, yes, they do have an internship as far as I'm aware. Um, and it is compulsory very much so. So once you come and you get to the internship um, moment, because I think it's offered in the third semester, um, you will have to find a job and complete the internship. I just can't tell how many hours exactly, um, but that will be in the curriculum of communication and media MA. I think, Ina, it's a two-part question. So the second part of the question is about language proficiency after admission. Actually, guys, as self-funded students, we ask you to upload the language proficiency straight away. Yeah, so you, you won't be invited for an entrance exam unless you provide your language proficiency. In fact, your, your application is blocked. You can't submit the application until you resolve that. And we talked about how you meet the English requirements. Aaron, yes. Yeah, um, I just wanted to point out too, um, just because you're a native English speaker, you should really check out uh, if your country's official language is English. I mean, obviously, maybe not everyone knows, but... Uh, the United States doesn't have an official language and uh, specifically Wisconsin does not have an official language. So when I applied, I had spoken with people from the university um, already. So they knew I spoke English, but I still had to go to my school and get a paper signed by the uh, principal. The uh, Anyone who was important at my school had to sign this paper saying I learned in English. So um, just be really sure that you have that um sorted out because it, it kind of caused me a little road bump in my application yeah i've got good news aaron so now we we do acknowledge uh, americans as english speakers <laughs> even if it's um, not as good as your english that, that's good matt <laughs> never be as good mate never be as good we we invented the language and, and you guys destroyed it but anyway we did some bad things too um yeah so we, now, if you're American, uh, you wouldn't have to provide that proof. But for everybody else, check the website and check how we define native speakers because it, it could affect you. Um, okay, Walid, uh, let's just check the question. So for the master's in finance, is there a mandatory internship to do during the program? Okay, it's a three-part question. So Ina mentioned this for the, for the communications program. Check, check the website, guys. Yeah, if you've got these uh, kind of questions, please check the program pages on the website and, and download what's called uh, the program specification because you'll have a detailed outline of the curriculum for, for every program. So ha have a look. There's 20 programs available. I remember quite a lot of them, but I don't remember every single one in, inside out. Uh, so... There could, there could be internships. I don't know if there's mandatory internship on the MSc Finance. Have a look at that program specification. Um, sorry uh, to yes. interrupt. I believe there is uh, no internship for the finance program. But uh, you do have to check because last time I checked was before the start of this academic year. So um, program leaders are continuously introducing newer and newer methods and new things in the curriculum in general. So um, just, just just check it out. Go to the study page of uh, finance and uh, see in the program um, sheet. And that's where you will find it. But I believe there isn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good. Uh, yeah, generally, the bachelor programs have compulsory internships. 
uh, perhaps not the the master's programs. The three bachelors that do is your your program, Ina, uh, the the BA communications, and the two business programs do have uh, compulsory internships. Uh, there was one more question here about uh, night well. A master's programs preparing students for better work experience later after graduation. Of course, I mean, we've, we've talked today about the practical elements embedded in all of the programs. I hope you grasped an answer to that question by now and, and you feel confident in what we've discussed. Are there night classes? No, we, we don't do evening classes. Uh, we deliver generally during the day. Uh, there are some later classes, but you should fit the schedule uh, and you should be prepared to study full-time, generally 10 to 20 hours a week uh, for all of our programs. Okay, we can do the next one. Uh, guys, we, we've now finished the official end, but we're going to carry on answering questions because we saw that there's there's a lot there. So we'll keep on answering for the moment. Uh, so feel free to leave if you've got your answers. Uh, thank you. But for everybody else who's got questions still, stay, stay tuned. We're going to get through them all. Uh, Liam is asking... IT engineering graduate, uh, can I apply for management and leadership? Potentially, Liam, uh, we need to check your transcripts. We need to see if you meet the minimum credit requirements. For management and leadership, you probably need about 40 ECTS in a business or economics related uh, field. Uh, so have a look on the website, see what it says. Have a look on your transcripts uh, and see uh, you know what uh, how your credits line up okay uh, we also have on our application process and application requirements pages we have what are called credit uh, recognition forms have a look at those forms they're there for for almost every program not actually the management and leadership yet but uh, almost uh, every other program have a look at those see if you'd be able to to fill those in and have a think about whether you'd meet the minimum credit requirements we plan to later uh, do a webinar for applicants uh, who will be completing those forms. So we'll be able to help you later in the cycle to complete the credit recognition form. Uh, IT engineering could be OK, but you'd need some business economics or, or foundation studies probably in your degree as well. OK, next question. Uh, OK, we've had a lot of questions about the preparatory program. Uh, Aladdin, I hope you got the answer. Uh, to this one now we've talked we've talked through it was on one of my previous slides uh, Gordon uh, what kind of mathematics level do you need for the preparation program there's actually no mathematics requirement Gordon uh, for the preparation program uh, there's only an English language requirement uh, there's some mathematics um, there's some mathematics but generally is focused on the Corvinus mathematics entrance exam uh, the preparation for the mathematics uh, Erin, do you want to talk a bit about what you've been studying in year one of the applied economics, mathematics-wise? Yeah, uh, so uh, I also, I guess, before I start, I should say I saw a few questions also about the math exam, which I did not take. But uh, the math that I'm learning now, uh, it's a lot of calculus. Um, then I get into this semester, I have microeconomics, which is a combination of calculus and economics um statistics probability theory uh so uh, applied economics is definitely a very heavy math uh focused subject um i would say yeah most of my classes are math i have accounting as well uh it really does help to have a strong background uh, i will say the hungarians are very diligent in their studies uh, a lot of times in class i'll hear you should remember this from high school and it's maybe something I'm not an expert in yet, but it's definitely manageable. As long as you have math skills, the problem solving skills, critical thinking, you can work your way through it, definitely. Yeah, I, I think the point is, if, you're, if you want to do a bachelor program and you're not sure about mathematics, then maybe the social science options will be better. Yeah, so yes, uh, like yes. Ina's studying, BA Communications would, would be a great program or International Relations or Sociology. If you uh, want to do business, international business, applied economics, there is some, some mathematics involved. Yeah, I will say if you do not like math, if you hate math, 
do not take applied economics. You you really have to enjoy math or at least be good at it. Um, yeah. I know the international business still has quite a bit of math, but I have heard that it's slightly less rigorous. Yep. Uh, Ben's asking about the practice mathematics test. It's it's available, Ben. Uh, it's available for you to download and complete in your own time. I'll try to find your comment uh, when we finish presenting and, and post the link underneath. I hope that will help for you. Uh, Alima, apply for bachelor's degree. Can I still apply for a preparatory program? Yeah, I think you can edit your application if you've used the Dream Apply system. So, so see if you can do that. If not, Alima, uh, if you if you want us to change it, get in touch and uh, we'll arrange for you to, to go for the preparatory program instead. If you don't think you're going to meet the, the English requirements, I think it's a really, really good, good place to start. And uh, of course, it will help you to do better on your bachelor degree if you have a year of, of preparation behind you and uh, you're not dealing with the rigors of moving to a new country and being away from home. Uh, from home because you've already done that for a year you're focusing just on your studies so i really recommend the preparatory program it will help you and, and anyone get better grades in the future hannah again uh so for a master's degree the competency test and or exam will be in april slash may and then there'll be another entrance exam or am i wrong yeah it's a bit confusing hannah so uh for anybody who applied before the 15th of march uh, all of their entrance exams are in April. If you apply later than 15th of March, all of your entrance exams will be in June. So that's how it works. You're either uh, early bird, which we call it, or, or a later applicant. If you apply for master's, you have to do the competency test. Everybody will do the competency test. If you applied for one of the eight programs with a written exam, you'll have to do a written exam. Um, and everybody will have to do an oral uh, an interview as well yeah so if you didn't apply before the 15th of march uh then your and all of this is going to be in june i hope that's that's clear and, and answers the question aileen if i'm uh, if the country i got my undergraduate diploma from doesn't offer apostles which other legalizations are accepted uh would an authentication work uh, there are uh, countries where you don't need to do a postal. Uh, so first of all, uh, if your country's EU or Lisbon Treaty member, uh, then you don't need to do anything, actually. Your, your diploma is automatically legalized. Uh, I can't tell from your name where you're, you're from, so I'm not sure uh, where you'll be from. But that's, that's the first category. The second category is a postal convention. So in that case, uh, you do get the apostle done. And then the third category is not Lisbon, uh, not EU, and not Apostle. Then you have to go through the process of legalization of your qualification. And yes, what you call authentication would, would work in those, those circumstances. Uh, we did put a blog post up about this last year uh, that talks, talks through these different scenarios and what you need to do. We've linked to that in a few places on the website. I'll try to find your comment again after the presentation uh, and then I'll give you the link to that blog post. I think it should should help. Chihiro is asking, are the new students accepted uh, only the dormitory which is far from the university? Well, there's no dormitories really far from the universities, are there, guys? Uh, they're, they're all close to the campus, the Corvinus universities. Uh, Ina and Aaron, um, Kanishki is right on campus. Yes, there is one that is further away. Um, there is. Uh, however, we are trying to uh, locate students first and foremost nearby. And after that, depending on your application and the evaluation, because in your application for dormitory, you get specific points. Uh, and that's how the commission evaluates if they can give you a dormitory and if yes, which kind of dormitory and so on. Uh, so pretty much they're trying to put um, as many people as they can in the dormitory that is right next to university. Um, however, we cannot guarantee it because uh, of course every year there are a lot of incoming students. 
Thanks, Ina. And uh, the other point is, uh, I forgot what the other point was. I was going to say something. Might come back to me later. Something about dormitories. It's, it's been two hours of, of work. Okay. Uh, Fatima, don't, you don't have a, a mathematics background, but you've applied for international business economics under the Stipendium Hungaricum Scholarship. How can I prepare for the mathematics test? Any tips? Um, I think you've chosen a difficult program, uh, to be honest. Yeah, if, if you don't like, if you don't have mathematics background, uh, any kind of business economics can be a bit difficult. Having said that, I think the international business has less mathematics than the business management. Uh, it's on the website, Fatima. Uh, we've put a, a practice paper up there. We've told you the textbook that you need to, to uh, get hold of. Uh, have a look. Yeah, we, I, I actually sent you an email uh, this week with, with this information in. So please have a look, check your junk mail. Every single uh, person whose stipendium Hungaricum, who's been nominated, has been sent this information this week. Have a look, the information's all there. Okay, next one. Oh, okay, guys, you uh, answer this and I'll come yeah, back to see if um, I can remember what I was thinking. So is there a film club for filmmakers? Um, Basically, there is a film club, but I think for the most part, like big, big part of it operates in Hungarian. Uh, but I do believe they have maybe a few internationals. And also um, in my program, Communications and Media, I also have to study film, uh, motion pictures and so on. It's part of my curriculum. So if you are, for example, in communications, it will be part of what you're actually studying um and it, it is very good because we have uh, an enormous like green studio where you will learn practice on site um also um yeah i can see that we also have like actual film screenings at the university um on i think maybe bi-weekly basis or maybe uh once a month um and they are with English subtitles, so you can attend those as well. But generally, we have a lot of organizations and clubs for art. Thanks, Ina. That, that was good. Um, yeah, actually, I Aaron, don't know about the arts program, sorry. You were telling me, though, that you studied a, a film program in, in high school, weren't you? In, in your uh, final yes, year. Yes, at my uh, university in the, in the US. So yeah, maybe we can start an international film club as well. That's that's definitely a possibility. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, thanks, Ina, as well. That was a great answer. Um, I remember my thought, guys. It was about the dormitories. I feel like I'm going to forget it again. No, I've got it. Uh, because that question from Chihiro was about the new students not get spaces in dormitories, uh, normally... Uh, new students get dormitory spaces as well. Uh, so it's, it's normally the first year students that really want to live in dormitories and have a chance to meet people. In, in years two, three or onwards, it's more common to get some shared property uh, with, with some friends who you've met on your program or you've met in dormitories already. So actually, as a new student, you've got a really good chance of securing dormitory spaces. Uh, you probably won't want to live every year in dormitories. Uh, probably, normally, just your first year is is a good good start. Um, okay, thanks, Lily. Um, yeah. So I I just want to add something on this question. It's uh, closely connected to the previous one regarding the film and filmmaking. Um, at the university, there are a few elective courses, which means they are not part of the curriculum, but you can pick them up. Uh, and they are in relation to arts and culture. Uh, more specifically, I think there are two types of courses. One is regarding uh, European culture and one is uh, Eastern. So you can pick up courses that are in close uh, relations to art and culture in your studies, depending on, on what you're studying, of course. Aaron's got a question, or he's written a question. <laughs> no, that one wasn't meant to show up. Okay, Hassan, uh, another a ACCA. Yeah, I know ACCA, uh, Aaron, for being from the UK. Uh, it's the Global Body for Professional Accountants. Can I apply for the, for the MBA? Uh, we had already uh, another ACCA inquiry. Uh, you should have a bachelor degree as well, Hassan. 
Yeah. So even if it's an ACCA level six, uh, you need to have a bachelor degree and equivalent to 180 UK credits in, in the UK. Sorry, in the UK, it's 120 credits a year. So it's 360 UK credits or in the European system, it's 180 ECTS. So you need to have a bachelor's degree. The ACCA level six on its own uh, wouldn't be enough for the MBA. So I hope you've got a bachelor degree as well. If you've got a bachelor degree from a different country, uh, as well as the ACCA, and you've got that three years of, of experience, as an, as an accountant, uh, you could be a great candidate for the, for the MBA. Okay, uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, Uluch, I don't know how to pronounce, I think it's a Turkish name, I don't know how to pronounce the C, maybe like a Ch, Uluch, I'm going to guess. Uh, when will the maths exam be? Uh, online or offline? So for people who applied early, it's next week. People who applied before the 15th of, of March. For everybody else, the exam is going to be in June. Uh, the exam is going to be online, I believe. Uh, so don't cheat. Make sure that you do it well and uh, in, a, in a proper environment. And, and prepare because we give you lots of materials to make sure you prepare for that. Uh, Chihiro again. Uh, Ina, you can answer this Ooh. one. Uh, interested in <laughs> okay. bachelor communication and media science. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm your person. Basically, I'm graduating uh, communication and media this year, so I can pretty much tell you everything because I'm in my final semester and I've studied the entire program. So, uh, in the very first year, in the beginning, you'll study very general. We call them foundation courses. In those foundation courses, you will study things like. Um, uh, psychology, international law, um, media economics, like things that will give you the foundation to build up on. Um, or even, I think we studied even uh, philosophy. Uh, we did study political science as well. So it's a lot of things that at first it, they might seem like, okay, these are really different from each other. Um, but at the same time, they're very, very much connected to communication media. After that, you get into kind of like more in depth uh, of the program. So you start studying um, program specific subjects. Uh, and that's when it gets really, really interesting. You get more practical work. Um, let me tell you, you have to write a lot of papers. Like it's all about essays and submitting, submitting uh, essay work. Um, also, you will have to deal with some case studies. You will have to uh, work a lot in teams. You will have to uh, be um, working on presentations. You will develop a lot your uh, soft skills as well because you have to basically talk and communicate all the time. Uh, and yeah, that's um, pretty much about the first year. Second year, you're getting even more in depth. Um, but you will have some statistics. So get prepared. The fact that you're signing up for communication doesn't mean that you won't meet any maths. So you will meet maths and you will have to successfully pass it. It's not that hard. It's just on a basic level. Uh, we also have things like information management, which is like working on uh, Tableau, which is a program for that data visualization, which is useful in marketing, for example. Um, what else in second year I clearly remember we had, uh, yeah, I think I mentioned media economics and so on. Um, oh, yeah, we had to uh, deal with uh, website building. So you have some of that and really useful courses about Google Analytics, uh, Google Ads. So you will get introduced to the whole Google Ads packages and so on, which is Absolutely amazing if you want to be an online marketer, digital marketer. Uh, and the third year, basically, right now, what I'm studying is HR management, uh, business communication, business negotiations. Um, we have intercultural communication. So uh, pretty good courses. I really, really enjoy them. And our teachers are extremely professional and they have a lot of years um, of knowledge and experience behind their back. So I strongly recommend communication media. Join, join us. We're great. I love the program and everybody loves our program. So 
yeah, highly recommend it. I hope that answered the question. It definitely answered it. Ch Ch thanks, Ina. Chihiro, check the website, like we said, and download that program specification uh, because it will give you everything that you could study. Uh, Siva Priya said, greetings. Greetings to you, Siva Priya. Uh, can you share the mathematics portion that will be tested for the Bachelor Business program? Uh, I'm going to share those links later. Uh, check them out because we've discussed this one a few times already. Um, Riedel Jane says, you applied before 15th of March, but you haven't received any kind of reply or comment. Is there anything that I need to do? Uh, there probably is. Yeah, so uh, actually my colleagues were uh, responding in all instances. You have to pay the application fee uh, and you have to have all your tasks. They're called tasks or the documents in, in the system. They have to have the status approved with the exception of the, the transcript one. Yeah, so we don't approve that until you send us your final diploma. For all of the other documents, your English proficiency, uh, your ID, they need to, it needs to have the status approved. Log in, check and see if it's approved. If it's not approved, you probably got an email or a comment. Uh, and if you didn't pay the application fee yet, that's, that's another reason. Check all those things out. If it's still, uh, you think there's something wrong, then you can get in touch with the admissions team and we'll, we'll look into it for you. Gordon, again, uh, Gordon's son's grown up in Japan, but he has both Irish and Japanese passports. What an incredible uh, mix. That's, that's fantastic. Uh, is there any advantage of applying on an Irish passport? I don't think there... Uh, oh, well, Irish is EU. Yeah, so there is slightly lower fee for, for EU nationals, actually. Uh, it's going to be pretty easy uh, for him to gain entry to Hungary as well because he won't need a, a visa. And uh, there's some countries even outside of the EU uh, where Hungary offers what's called a visa expedition. Uh, so you can you can quickly gain entry uh, to Hungary. I think that affected Aaron with with his US uh, passport as well. Uh, so Gordon, yeah, I advise him to apply as an Irish citizen. He'll get a lower price for the program. Uh, he won't need a visa. And uh, sounds a really uh, cool combination of nationalities. Uh, this is the kind of person that we like to add to our Corvinus melting pot. Okay. I think that's it. Yeah. yeah okay. I think, so, yeah. We can some people up. stayed. Some people stayed to the end. Uh, guys, do you want to say any final words before we go? Well, from my side, uh, thanks to everyone who came, uh, joined, tuned in, listened to us. Um, please don't forget to double check your applications. If you have all documents in, you really don't want to miss out because otherwise your application won't go through and you might be thinking, why aren't they messaging me, mailing me? But actually you have to uh, fill uh, the application completely uh, in order for it to be good. Uh, but still, thank you all for listening. And um, we very much hope to hear from you and maybe see you in the autumn. Yeah, I think Ina said it all. Just wanted to tell you guys thanks for coming. Thanks for the great questions. And yeah, hopefully everything goes great for you and we'll see you next year. And thanks to you two guys as well. You both presented great. Uh, thank you to Rihard and, and Helga. Guys, uh, exactly what the students just said. We'll see you in September. All the best till then. Take care.